This is not a royal palace. It's a 19th century shopping mall in Milan, Italy. So how did we get from this beautiful masterpiece with unprecedented dimensions for its time, complete with ornamentation head to toe, to the vast abundance of plain and uninteresting malls of today? Well, in this video, we're gonna explore the birth of malls and why they don't have to be soulless places. To begin with, shopping malls are much older than you think. Trading is one of humanity's oldest activities, and when you've got something to sell, you need a place to sell it. In ancient Greece, every city had an agora in the center for meeting and for selling wares. The agora was the heart of the city and the location for public gatherings. It was also a place where people could buy and sell goods, including fresh produce and artisanal crafts. The agora served as a marketplace and a social center where people could catch up on local news and gossip. Despite its historical significance, the agora fell into disuse over time as new forms of commerce emerged. This is Trajan's Market in Rome built by the Emperor Trajan in the early 100s AD. It might just be the world's first true shopping mall, with several stories of shops, offices, and apartments right in the center of ancient Rome, once a bustling and vibrant place. Trajan's market served as a hub for trading goods and services in the heart of the city, and today visitors can explore the ruins and get a sense of what life was like for shoppers and merchants in ancient Rome. The market's unique architecture and design continue to inspire architects and designers to this day. Though the world's most famous pre-modern shopping mall is surely Istanbul's Grand Bazaar. An immense covered market over 600 years old and still going strong. It's only one of many ancient bazaars around Turkey, the Middle East, and North Africa. The Grand Bazaar was commissioned by Mehmet II from 1444 to 1481, immediately after the Ottoman conquest of Istanbul in 1453, to provide financial resources for the Hagia Sophia. The construction of the Grand Bazaar began in 1461. In the beginning, it was a wooden structure, but is now entirely built of stone and brick. Bricks were used for the vaulted arches, cut stones were used at the base of the arches, and walls were built by plastering over bricks or stone. For centuries, the Grand Bazaar was the most vital center of commerce, handicraft, and finance in the Mediterranean and Near East. In medieval and Renaissance Europe, there were marketplaces, of course, and even some covered ones such as the Logia Nuovo in Florence, or the huge cloth walls of places like Krakow or Ypres, once bustling commercial centers. The concept of marketplaces has undergone several transformations over the years. While earlier versions were essentially outdoor setups with little or no overhead cover, the early 19th century saw the advent of a new era of marketplaces. These were covered arcades with permanent enclosed shops, which were more conducive to shopping. What started as narrow streets with added roofs gradually gave way to purpose-built shopping precincts. Examples include London's Burlington Arcade in 1818 and the Paris Galerie Vivian in 1823. From these humble beginnings, marketplaces continue to evolve and thrive to this day. Soon enough, the invention of new technology and construction methods allowed for covered arcades of a far greater scale. Like the Galerie Royale St. Hubert in Brussels, built in the 1840s, with their barrel vaults of iron and glass. The glass ceilings allow natural light to flood into the walkways, highlighting the intricate details of the ornate architecture. In these historic buildings, one can stroll through luxury shops, quaint cafes, and admire the intricate stonework. And so in Europe came the 19th century and the age of grand covered arcades, which were the direct predecessor of modern malls. London's Leiden Hall Market is another fine example, but the greatest of all was yet to come. In 83, Italy had been unified into the Kingdom of Italy, with King Vittorio Emanuele on the throne. In Milan around the same time, several projects had been underway to develop the city center around the cathedral, opening up the narrow streets to create better public spaces. A competition was held to redesign the space, and its winner was Giuseppe Mangoni, who had seen the glazed arcades of Paris and London, and came back with an ambitious plan for his native Milan. To build a colossal four-way glazed arcade linking the cathedral to the La Scala. Construction started in 1865 after a ceremony attended by the Prime Minister and during which the foundation stone was laid by the King himself, which says a lot about the civic importance of this project. It was mostly completed and opened just three years later. Named in honor of the King, the Galleria Vittorio Emanuele was a marvel unmatched in Europe at the time. The glass dome has the same circumference as that of the St. Peter's Basilica and inside the Galleria is 200 meters from one end to another, 40 meters wide and 50 meters tall. Mangani also designed the colossal and suitably grand entrance to be reminiscent of ancient Roman triumphal arcs. It was completed in 1877, although Mangani died the day before they were opened, where he fell from the roof during a final inspection. 
The floors of the Galleria were decorated with mosaics, and the walls with murals and statuaries. Seemingly no expense was spared on this grand project. It was a statement of intent from the new administration of King Vittorio Emanuele and the unified kingdom of Italy. The Galleria was never just a shopping center. It was always supposed to be a new and defining feature of the Milan cityscape, and that's exactly what it became. A symbol of Milan and part of its life no less than the famous cathedral itself. Nor should we think of it as old-fashioned, simply because its architecture and decoration were inspired by the Renaissance. The great iron and glass vaults were a triumph of modern engineering. The buildings that line the arcades are four stories high and ornamented with frescoes and reliefs depicting science, art, industry, agriculture, with statues of 24 famous Italians. And it set the gold standard for glazed arcades in Europe. The Galleria Umberto in Naples, opened in 1890, was directly inspired by Mangani's Galleria in Milan. This was perhaps the peak of 19th century malls which were public monuments no less than commercial centers. But the 20th century saw the birth of a new kind of mall, all thanks to the invention and rise of the car, the out-of-town shopping center. Here was something new entirely, catering to the vast and ever-growing suburbs of cities around the world, particularly in the USA. Starting with a place simply called Shopping in the Swedish center of Lulia in 1955, the first modern, purpose-built, indoor downtown shopping mall. From that point on, the face of retail would change forever. Malls spread like wildfire, popping up in every major city across the globe. Shoppers flocked to these indoor paradises, eager to escape the harsh outdoor elements and find bargains in one convenient location. America saw the rise of mega malls like the Mall of America, a destination so massive it could accommodate entire amusement parks. Retailers adopted to this new shopping landscape, tailoring their stores and marketing strategies to the mall-loving masses. It was a new era for shopping and it was here to stay. Some of the biggest and most visited buildings in the world are malls. The biggest right now is the Iran Mall, with a floor space of nearly 2 million square meters. The Iran Mall is followed closely by the Dubai Mall, boasting a floor space of over 1 million square meters. Other large malls include the West Edmonton Mall in Canada, with a floor space of over 500,000 square meters, the SM Mega Mall in the Philippines, over 500,000 square meters as well, Central World in Thailand, the floor space of over 400,000 square meters. These malls attract millions of visitors each year and offer a wide variety of shopping, dining, and entertainment options. Shopping malls may have come a long way, but they're directly descended by an unbroken chain from the agoras, the bazaars, and arcades of old. Still, malls are often characterized as soulless places, but the Galleria Vittorio Emanuele shows that that doesn't have to be the case. Today, online shopping is changing the retail landscape once again, but the mall remains an important part of many communities and a symbol of modern consumer culture. Alright, so that's gonna be it guys. Please subscribe for more Squad Suburbs and thank you for watching.